In today's video, we'll be reviewing the B-Link EQ13 with the Intel N200 processor. Are these online benchmarks completely BS? Can this play games? And where does this little mini PC fit in the market? Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribe. We've got another box, this time from B-Link. So they sent us another one of their mini PCs in purpose of video review. No cash has been exchanged, and as always, all opinions are our own. So this one is the EQ13. It's in navy blue, and it has the Intel N200 processor. So at least we're hoping it'll be a nice bump from the N100 series. Ah. So it greeted with a thank you message, and this is printed on the plastic cover, protecting it from scratches. Inside the box we have another welcome card. This one says, hello. Hello. Here's a manual in multiple languages, explaining how to connect it up, what all the ports and buttons do, and how to upgrade either the memory or storage. We have a power cable, measuring around one and a half meters. And as I'm in Japan, this is the American style. And we also have a one and a half meter HDMI cable. Checking the specs, we have a four core, four thread CPU that boosts up to 3.7 gigahertz. And while we only have a mild boost compared to the N100, this chip shares the similar six watts TDP. And it's nice to see that it comes with two M2 slots, giving us a chance to expand the storage. The computer's case is made of a hard plastic, and on the front, we only have a few ports. There's a USB 3.2, a 3.5mm audio jack, a pinhole for a BIOS reset, a USB-C running at 3.2 speeds, a small power switch, and a small LED. Moving to the right side, there's a wall for graffiti artists, and on the rear is where most of the action is. Along the top we have an exhaust, this is where the heat gets blown out. We also have two USB 3.2s, one USB 2, there's two HDMI ports for video, two ports for one gigabit Ethernet LAN, and at the end is where we plug up our power cable. Note that the power supply is inside this mini PC, so there's no need for a power brick or adapter. On the left side is more of nothing, but if we take a look underneath, we can see where the air intake is. Still very presentable with a large logo, and no screws on show, keeping it very neat. On both sides we have two bars that work as feet, giving the unit enough space so air can get underneath. It's about time for the size comparison. The EQ13 is much larger than GMK Tech G5, and a little bigger than the B-Link Mini S12. Here's the Chewy Lark Box X 2023, and the Chewy stands a little taller, as do the faster Ryzen variants, such as the B-Link Sur 6 and the GMK Tech K5. It measures around 12cm in length and width, and it stands around 4cm tall. For those that need something a bit more relatable, here's an SD card, a very hip and banging compact disc, for those that like to move it, move it. Beverly can spin on me any time. Here's a popular handheld, the Game Boy. And a Roybush teabag. It's around four Roybush teabags big. After connecting the mini PC to a monitor, keyboard, speakers and mouse, we can power up. Power up. We first greet you to the window setup screen, where we select our language, keyboard settings, and things like that. And around two minutes later, we're in. All the specs check out, and indeed we're on Windows 11 Pro. It's already activated out of the box, so there's no need to go online for this. And then we scanned for malware and viruses, and everything came out clean. Nothing was found in Windows Defender, Malwarebytes, or Avast. Just what we like to see. We can now update Windows to the latest version, and get cracking. As for use cases, this is great for office work. And very much like the N95, N100, and N97, it handles Windows very well. So if you're looking for something for 2D art, light loads, or general online work, this is a great choice, making it ideal as a student or family PC. Here's some video streaming in Amazon Prime. Is my dad kicking some butt in Netflix? And some YouTube in 4K. If we check the benchmarks, the N200 has a nice bump in CPU performance over its peers. But as the GPU is limited to 750 MHz, graphics scores come in second behind the N97. Outside that, the storage medium gave us pretty low scores, letting us know that an M2 SATA SSD is installed, rather than a PCI NVMe. The Wi-Fi signal strength is fair, at about 70%, and we can easily pair our Bluetooth controller, and we had no problems with random disconnects from either. On to the game test. Starting off with some 2D games, here's Cuphead. Unfortunately in 4K it's a bit too much, but in 1080p, full speed. Sonic Mania. Mm. 
return to Monkey Island. Hey, Wally. Well, 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 look what the surf washed ashore. It's Guy Brush Threepwood. Streets of Rage 4. My friend Peppa Pig. While all of these games are great in 1080p, Dave the Diver requires a bit more power. As it is a fairly slow game, it is playable at this speed, but we need to lower resolution to 720p to get 60fps. Next up, 3D games. Rocket League. Similar to Dave the Diver, we are playable, but 720p is heavily recommended. Dota 2. And Counter Strike 2. We're at 720p low, and while it is playable, it's not ideal. We tried to boost TDP to 35 watts and speed of the GPU in the BIOS, but for the most part, it had no real effect in game, leaving performance quite similar to the N100 and a definite step down from the N97 and Ryzen CPUs. If we look at the BIOS, this is actually one of the strong points of this unit, so if you're someone that wants a hands-on approach to settings, this should be right up your alley. That is, provided you don't need to alter the GPU speed. We connected our Batacera drive via USB, and it boots up this Linux distro without any issues. We could connect to our Wi-Fi network, our Bluetooth controller was easily paired up, we could emulate systems such as the Commodore Amiga, Xbox, and PlayStation 2 rather well. But if you want something for PlayStation 3 or Switch, you may need to look elsewhere. So far, we're not seeing anything that warrants a price bump over the B-Link S12, but maybe our answer lies within. In each corner there are rubber covers, that need to be pried up using a tool such as a small flathead screwdriver. Now we can remove the four posi screws in each corner. Then we can open the case by pulling this rubber tack. Oh. The DDR4 memory is located at the bottom. In the center we have a heatsink, and on the other side a power supply. This one outputs in 19 volts, 3.42 amps, so it can supply a maximum of just under 65 watts. There's only one slot for the memory, and this stick is generic. Two screws holding the heatsink. We have another thermal pad for an extra stick if needed. Let's take a look at the storage. And yeah, this is generic M2 SATA SSD. We checked the storage and memory in HWinfo, which gives no information at all. There are two slots for the NVMe, the one next to the power supply is good for PCI 3P4, and the other for PCI 3P1. We tried moving the M2 SATA to the 3B1 slot so we could have better speeds on our PCI NVMe stick, but unfortunately, it doesn't support SATA drives. Here's the Intel AX101 Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip, but let's move on to the temperatures and power draw. At idle, this computer stays around 47 degrees and is near enough silent. Pulling around 10 watts from the wall. When under load, our CPU got to around 70 degrees Celsius, and what's surprising is the computer is still pretty much silent. And it's pulling around 25 watts from the wall. For the sake of curiosity, we also decided to raise the TDP to 35 watts and GPU speed to 1200, but the difference was negligible. As the EQ13 is silent, has a low power draw, and can easily expand storage, we figured that the best use of this computer will be as a server. And there are even Windows applications for this. For example, Jellyfin gives us a media server on a network where we can stream video or audio from. It's pretty much our own customizable YouTube. So we check our music, 
got some banging tunes from Bird Flu, Emi Chicken, Two Unlimited, and Ace of Bass. You can even stream video like Bad Influence, Alan Partridge on the day today, and the flight to the Concords. As Steam provides dedicated server tools for many of its games, we can even use it as a game server, and it's very simple to get it running. Just start the tool and ask your friends to join in. Here we are on my main computer. And there it is. Our own personal private playground. Just a bit lonely if you have no friends. <laughs> it's about time for the pros and the cons. The EQ13 is silent, stays cool, and has a nice looking case, especially considering that the power supply is inside. And it's great to see the B-Link have provided a large heatsink and thermal pad for additional storage if needed. Unfortunately, we have generic single-channel DDR4 memory, and that together with the generic SATA M2 SSD is quite disappointing. The CPU performs very similar to the N100 when it comes to gaming, and the plastic on the case is a fingerprint magnet. If you're looking for a cheaper alternative, you can't really go wrong with the B-Link S12 or the GMG Tech G5. Both of these are Nippian Windows, and the Intel N97 in the G5 provides better performance in games and emulation, albeit a little noisy. If you wanted to play games, we suggest one with a Ryzen processor. They are more expensive, but are much more capable, so you can play more games and emulate up to PlayStation 3 and Switch. As for the B-Link EQ13, this works perfectly if you're looking for a low-powered, silent server. The N200 chip with its newer video codecs is perfect for multimedia tasks, and as the power adapter is in the box, it's a tidy mini PC to have running at the back of a cupboard. Summary. One, two, three, four. Sound until then, 200 pounds silent as a whisper loud. Many PC dance aloud. Not for gaming, don't you see? PS2, no PS3. Great low power server base, storage memory shitty. Ham it up, ham it up. Feeling never jams it up. Silent server in your lap. Some choices are total whack. Ham it up, ham it up. Feeling never jams it up. Hell, it ain't one for gaming as a server it can sing. Mini PC dance around Not for gaming, don't you see? PS2, no PS3 